Hey, ambitious, what up? It's 2022. Looks like we made it. <laughs> I don't know the rest of the words to that Shania Twain song, but that is the energy that I'm bringing to this video today. So if you're here, I want to say holla, happy 2022. I can't believe that we're here. I'm actually astounded. If you would have asked me two years ago, if I thought that the last two years of all of our lives would be what it has been, I probably would say you're smoking the crack pipe, but we're here. So the whole intention of this video today is talking about the new moon that is happening tonight in the sign of Capricorn. And I am going to be talking all about the energies coming in, the spiritual meanings, and we're going to wrap the video up today with a really amazing journal prompt sesh. So these are the things that I do every month with my Ambitious Academy students. So every month we do a new moon ritual together. We do a full moon ritual together. And that's on top of the 20 plus hours of live coaching that happens every month. So I wanted to give y'all a little taste of what I do with Ambitious Academy and give this as a little gift from my black heart to yours for 2022. Okay. So the new moon in Capricorn, what's going on? What is this all about? It's hardcore energy. Like every moon has its energy, but this is like balls to the wall. So everyone needs to get on there. It depends and pull up a chair and listen to this bitch talk. Cause I'm going to school your asses. and I'm going to get you ready for what is to come in the next 28 day lunar cycle. Okay. So Capricorn, some of my most favorite people in the world are Capricorns. They're the goats, right? Also, they're the goats, greatest of all times. They have such an incredible energy. Uh, but remember, if you think about like a goat, they're tenacious. They'll eat fucking tin cans. They don't give a shit, okay? So that is really the energy, not really so much eating the tin cans, but that's really the energy of this new moon. Like it's un freaking stoppable energy. And if you can harness this energy, you are going to be jamming out with your clams out for the next 28 days. Okay. So what is this energy all about? The energy of the Capricorn new moon is not only, if you hear a little pitter patter of little feet, that's my little friend Pearl coming down with one of her balls or bones or accoutrement that's been floating around upstairs in my house. I'm downstairs in my office right now. So the energy is not only about setting like real achievable, tangible goals that are going to stabilize you, but actually the, if you use this moon in the right way, and I'm going to obviously tell you how, if you use this moon in the right way, it's going to bring you so much the energy is like very boosting. Like the energy is like, boom, like next level energy. So it's almost like you can go from zero to a hundred in like 3.2 seconds. Okay. So I really desire for you to harness this Capricorn new moon energy to finally, and like, I'm going to use the word finally with a capital F finally achieve and accomplish your resolutions that you maybe have made or your goals or your dreams or your aspirations. This is a master number year, 2022, not, a, not to get off on a tangent on the Capricorn new moon, but the master number six is about bringing things to an end, to closing the, the, you know, the box on it. It's like, okay, we did it. We did it. We got the t-shirt, like we're moving on. And that is really, truly the master number because 2022 is two, two, and two, 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 and two, three twos equal six. The master number six in numerology is about like finalizing and closing the lid, getting the t-shirt, ascending to the next level. But it's only, hear me, it's only if you choose to do this, okay? It's only if you choose to do this. So you can be like, oh yes, I'm doing all the things, but you're not doing anything. You're not taking the action and therein lies the problem. So if you can harness these energies of this Capricorn new moon, you are gonna, ba boom, you're gonna catapult yourself to the next levels. Okay, so think about it. And I'm just reading my notes. I'm not, if I'm looking down, I'm not paying, I'm not like drifting off into another dimension. I'm just looking at my notes so I stay on point because you know how I like to ramble sometimes and go off on a little tangent. So I'm trying to stay very clear cut, concise and focused for you. 
So the last two years, we as a collective, right, have endured, a collective means all of us on a collective conscious energy. We've endured and experienced so freaking much, so much bad, but also a lot of good. Um, I was talking to a girlfriend of mine yesterday on the phone and she was like, I have experienced the highest highs and the lowest lows of my life in the last two years. And I was like, you know, it's really just a great way to just like put it out there. It's true. We have all experienced the highest highs and the lowest lows. I have experienced so much death, so much sickness, so much destruction, not only in my own life, but like in my, in my surrounding life um, with friends and family members and colleagues and coworkers and clients. But we as a collective have also experienced all these things. Same thing with beautiful. There's been such beautiful parts for the last two years, but, but honestly, because of our reticular activating system in our brain, we only really focus on the bad things. So just really give yourself a fucking collective woo, high five for what we have all, let's do it right now, <laughs> like 10 million high fives because we have endured and experienced so much and we've been under such heavy, heavy bombardment and heavy energetic weight that we can't even fathom. We can't even begin to fathom like what we have energetically gone through. So give yourself a huge high five and so much, so much props for making it here on this other side. Okay. So remember the new moon is always about planting the seeds, right? It's about, it's about planting the seeds and watering the root. So in the new, uh, in the full moon, you can really reap the benefits and harvest the fruit. You know, my, um, my transcendental meditation teacher, Amita Chopra, used to always say to me, Katie, you have to water the, you have to water the root to yield the fruit. Okay. And I would be like, mm, I love, I want it now like Veruca salt from Willy Wonka, but we can't. So we have to plant the seeds in the new moon. And then we have to reap the harvest in the full moon. So it's a 28 day lunar cycle. The energy of this, of this new moon in Capricorn is it's very about structure. Okay. It's very much about discipline and responsibility and goal setting and resourcefulness and amb ambition, right? It's really about being ambitious. A lot of us, the last two years have lost all of the structure in our lives. I, myself included, you know, I would, I had my life down to this like well-oiled scientific machine, right? Like I would fast on Mondays and Tuesdays and I would do my events on these days and I would do my calls on these days and I would show up like this, this day. And I'd had a date night on Tuesday. And now it's kind of like, you know, stick your finger in your bum, pull out a plum, see which way the wind is blowing. And for a lot of us, and I'm a manifesting generator in my human design, and my Enneagram is very much like, I have to have structure. I feel like super out of control, but also because I had a lot of trauma in my childhood, I really always look towards like, how can I make my life more structured and more rigid so that I can accomplish my goals and dreams and, and I can protect myself and not feel triggered. But that's not really working for us anymore. We have to have structure and discipline and responsibilities now in different ways, right? And we have to really understand that we are so resourceful. We're always looking for somebody else to come in and help us and for somebody else to come in and save us. And we don't, and I'm going to use the N word. We don't need that anymore, especially now. So Capricorn, the actual, the actual sign of Capricorn, it rules restriction. It rules time. It rules time constraints. It just rules rules and it rules being militant, the goat. The Capricorn, they like the rules. They like the structure. Everything has to be like on, like, where, why are you not on time? Why are you five minutes late? I'm, I'm going to be late. I'm stressing out. And again, we can look at this both ways. Selective have to be more in the flow. We have to put better time constraints on our time, but we have to allow a little wiggle room here and there. Okay. And side note, just to get off on a tangent for a second, Mercury and Venus, and I'm going to talk about this in upcoming videos in Ambitious Academy, but Mercury and Venus, okay, they're both going to be retrograding in the month of January. And during these times that we're going into these Venus and these Mercury retrogrades is this, it's time to buckle down 
And it's time to really, really think about our time and us being present and, and smart ways to really take ourselves to the next level and to really look at like, what is really, truly serving our highest, greatest good? And what is really, truly helping us get to where we desire to go or who we desire to be or the goals, dreams, and aspirations that we desire to attain. And because Mercury rules communication, it's like, okay, mix that with the Capricorn energy. Like, how are we communicating our hopes, our dreams, our goals, our desires, our boundaries, right? How are we telling people our rules? Like Matt and I, we really don't fight, but when we fight, we get into like crazy fights. And it's always about one of us is not communicating what we truly need, okay, in our lives for rules. You know, like I'll say something to him and he's like, well, I didn't know that that was a rule of yours. You've never told me that that was a rule of yours. And I'm like, fuck you. But then I'm like, oh, I really actually didn't tell him my rules. Um, you know, like this morning, I don't like to be talked to first thing in the morning. Like I really like to get up in a quiet state. I like to go do my habituals. I like to have my coffee. I talk, you know, I talk about this all the time in my podcast and he gets up and he's like laying in bed. He's like, is it raining out? What's going on outside? Like, I'm like, first of all, motherfucker, I'm not a weather lady and the, the shades in my house aren't even open. So I, I know that I'm very powerful, but I don't have x-ray vision. So I can't see that it's raining out. Then he starts asking me about the coffee and I'm just like, shut the fuck up. And then like, we, we sat down and had coffee and he's like, what is this thing? And I'm like, Matt, you know that I don't like to be talked to in the morning. He's like, I do like, you never told me that. And then I was like, well, I never actually did. So now I have to like con- communicate like Matt, if you're up with me at the same time, like just kind of just give a bitch a break for like 20 minutes while she gets the hot magical bean water into her body. Do you know what I mean? So how are you communicating? What are your rules? What are your boundaries? How are those rules and boundaries and desires and your communication helping you get to that next level? And because Venus rules love, like how are we loving and how are we being loved? How open is our heart? How closed is our heart? How are we experiencing love on a daily basis? And what's our love language? You know, I'm going to talk about this a lot in a bitches Academy. Like people don't even know that what their love language is. You know, my love language is acts of service and Matt's is physical touch. I'm the kind of person, like, if you never hug me or touch me for the rest of, I know this sounds like a cold hearted bitch, but like, this is just, I'm not into it. Like, I don't need to be hugged when I'm upset. I don't need to be, I don't need to be coddled. I don't need my back rub. Like, I don't need that. That's just not my love language. When Matt, like, cleans the kitchen or he like brings home something nice that I didn't ask him for. Like maybe he knows I'm in a, in the middle of a kind of an overwhelming season in my business. And I, and I am in the back of my head, I'm like, shit, I have to cook dinner. I have to do all these things. And he just brings home healthy takeout. And I'm like, Oh my God, I love you. I want to give you a hand job. This is what I'm saying. But Matt is the opposite. He doesn't give a shit if the house is clean. He doesn't give a shit about any kind of acts of service. He cares about physical touch. He wants to be hugged and touched and kissed 24 seven. And we are totally opposite ends of the spectrum with our love languages. And a lot of people who get together, their love languages are total opposite and they wonder why they're not getting along. Figure out your love language. Okay. That's another, that's another big thing with um, this Capricorn new moon and the two retrogrades with Mercury and with Venus. And another thing is too, to really focus on organization because Mercury has a lot to do with organization, but Capricorns, they are organized. Like they thrive with everything being like labeled and like perfect. They can't really do their best work if things are chaotic in there, it's kind of like messy. Like my online business manager and soul sister, Kim Fox, she's a Capricorn. Okay. And she's like, I have to clean my whole entire, you know, she lives in this like fancy schmance RV and she's like living her best RV life. But she's like, before I do this work, I have to clean the house. I have to organize. Everything has to be a certain way. And I used to be like, Kim, stop wasting your time. Like, let's get to work. I'm an Aquarius. So I'm like, well, whatever. And she's like, no, this is how I thrive. And now I just know that about her. And I'm just like, okay, she's just doing her little goat stuff. And she's like, and she's going to clean up and she's going to eat the tin cans. And then she's going to do the work. When we know how we operate in an organized space, we can just do better. We can be better. Right. And what are you doing with your hobbies? And what are you doing with your free time? Kim actually texted me yesterday and she said, I really want to delve into like some really great hobbies this year that like aren't about making me money. They're just because like, I love to do it. And I was like, you know, I feel that too. 
So like this year, some of my intentions are like, I desire to play the piano every day. I really, really desire to learn how to ride a horse. For the last couple of years, I've been obsessed with horses and I really desire, not want, but desire a gypsy vanner horse. And that's like, just been like something that I've always desired the last couple of years. And Matt's like, you don't even know how to ride a horse. You never ridden a horse in your life. And I'm like, can't be that hard, you know? So I'm going to start taking horseback riding lessons. Like riding horses isn't going to make me money, but it's going to bring me joy and it's going to bring love to my life. And it's going to make me feel like I'm doing things that make me feel like it's moving me in a happy way to the next level. So this is another, so let's get back onto the, on track. I just had to digress a little bit with the, the two retrogrades because I think that they're really important, especially with this new moon in Capricorn. So this is a time to step off stage. Okay, what do I mean by that? This is a great time to step away from your public image, how people view you, right? And really get quiet and go within and work on your shit and make your moves in silence. And when you make your moves and you go to that next level, then you can come back out on stage and go, ta-da. So many people tell the world every little fucking thing that they're doing. And I'm telling you right now, it's not a good energy because not everybody has your heart. Okay. Listen to me right now. Open your ears, clean the potatoes for a second. Not everybody has your heart. So for example, when my ambitious Academy students or my clients come to me and they're like, I'm going to do all these things. I'm like, yes, bitch. Yes. Yes. And I'm like, so excited for them. And I want to help them. I am not like, mm, fucking who the hell she thinks she is, but let me just tell you, honey, 98% of the human population is going to be cursing you and sending you bad vibes and being negative and jealous and avarice and greedy and yucky about the things that you desire. So stop telling everybody your big hopes, dreams, goals, and aspirations. Just be about it. Don't talk about it and just do the things and do it in quiet and do it in silence. Every time you fart, you don't have to tell people on social media, oh, I just farted and it smelled like, you know, Mexican food. No, you just do the fucking thing. And when you reach the goal, then you can come back out on stage and go, look at me. I deserve a fucking Oscar. Okay. So make your moves in silence. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Right. Um, my grandmother always used to say to me, um, a fish with a closed mouth can never get caught. A fish with a closed mouth can never get caught. So it, let's just say you say, I'm going to lose 50 pounds this year. That's my goal. And you just tell everybody, I'm gonna lose weight. I'm gonna lose weight. I'm gonna lose weight. Great. Wonderful. Everyone should live their best, most healthy, healthiest part of their lives. Right. I always talk about that ambitious treat your, treat your body like a, a temple and not a trash can. But then what happens? This is what happens. Tell me this doesn't happen. You go out to dinner with a bunch of your friends that you said uh, to them that I'm going to lose 50 pounds and you want a piece of chocolate cake and a couple glasses of wine and they start fucking with you about it. And they're like, Oh, I thought you thought, I thought you were going to lose weight. I thought you were going to lose weight. And then you start feeling bad about yourself. Then you start saying, well, I've never lost the 50 pounds before. How the fuck am I going to do it now? And that like, you know, as one of my girls, Aubrey says, the itty bitty shitty committee starts talking in your brain. And then all of a sudden you're like, I'm not going to do it. Fuck it. Bring me the nachos, bring me the, you know, cheese fries, bring me the mozzarella sticks, bring me the fucking cake, the donuts, the candy, the pie, the, you know, cakes and pies, cakes and pies. And then you're right back to where you started from. And then you never get to feel what it feels like to be an optimally healthy, well, bitch, shut your fucking trap, shut your pie hole. A fish with a closed mouth can never get caught. Just come out and be like, look at me. I lost 50 pounds. Look at how hot I am. That's it. And this is also the energy is not what you want, but who you desire to be. It's not about what you want. It's about who you desire to be, right? So it's like, okay, saying, I would like to make a million dollars this year. For a lot of you, it's a money. Let's just talk about money because it's easy to talk about. You said, might say, I really want to make a million dollars this year. Okay, I'm going to tell you something right now, honey. I've made seven figures multiple times and it don't make you feel any different. It don't make you feel any different. I'm telling you. You feel like the same old hoe that you wore the day before that you had the million dollars in your bank account, okay? Go by what you want to feel like, how you desire to feel, right? So like, what will that million dollars give you? 
oh my God, I'm going to feel so powerful. I'm going to feel like a leader. I'm going to feel like I can do anything I want, whatever I want. You want to fly private? Great. You want to go and, you know, backpack, fancy backpack across Europe for six months? Great. How do you desire to feel when you achieve that goal, right? Stop fucking checking the boxes. I've checked all the boxes. It doesn't work. It doesn't feel good, okay? Stop checking the boxes and go within and ask yourself every time that you show up, whether it's on your social media, whether you're an entrepreneur and you're sending out an email to your email list, whether you're showing up for your children, your husband, your significant other, school, work, whatever, your friends, ask yourself every time, am I about to show up as my highest vibrational frequency self? And if the answer is no, don't show up at all. Don't show up at all. Because a lot of you are showing up out of obligation and obligation is a lower vibrational frequency energetic word. Remember, I'm a wordsmith. I watch the words that come out of my mouth. Every word that you say becomes your reality. Every thought you think, every word you say, every action that you do becomes your reality, right? This is also, the new moon is about creating real order in your life. It's about like streamlining and simplifying. And every time I feel the the feeling of like, I'm starting to speed up again, because if one thing that we've learned in the last two years is, was to slow down, we kind of had no choice. And I start, I'm starting to feel right now that everybody's starting to speed up again. They're starting to be like, oh, this is just like old times. Honey, listen to me. It will never be again like old times. I hate to fucking rain on your parade, shit in your oatmeal and like drop this truth bomb on you. But it can't be the old us because we're, we're jumping, we're quantum leaping into higher vibrational frequency timelines. We can never go back to the old way. It's part of the Kali Yuga. If you don't know what the Kali Yuga is, look it up. I'm also going to be talking about the Kali Yuga a lot in Ambitious Academy. We are in a 300 to 400,000 year energy frequency. We just started in the Kali Yuga, okay? And we have to create order in our own lives and we can't allow ourselves to speed up and we can't long for the olden days. We have to be in the now and we have to realize that all the things, good, bad, or indifferent that are coming into our lives are coming into all of our lives just singularly and collectively to shift the timeline frequencies into higher dimensions so that we experience love and calm and peace and abundance. And we can just think of things and manifest them like with the snap of a finger. Right. And this is also about freedom from worry, freedom from chaos, freedom from judgments, and really stepping into harmony and wisdom and being the goat, the greatest of all time. And also the the goat, which is tenacious. Have you ever seen like the goats? I will post this picture. I found it the other day and I was like, oh my God, I'm posting this on my app. Have you ever seen the goats that climb like the sides of the mountains and like the Matterhorn mountains? And there's like a rock this big and like all four of their hooves are on that like one rock and they're just like, like chilling. Like they're just like smoking a fucking marble light chilling there. How do they do it? They're fucking fearless and they're tenacious and they're determined, okay? So here's your journal prompts. That was not me. Did you just hear this? Pearl has this like little ball and she's like chewing on it under here. Hold on. Say hi to everybody. Say hi to everybody. Pearl is the goat. Pearl is the greatest of all time. Are you not? Say hello. Say hello to everybody. She's like, put me down, bitch. I want to go play with my ball. Pearl is a goat. She is tenacious. You ever see like a dog with a bone and they won't stop? Like that's what we have to be like. We have to be the goat. And that is the Capricorn energy. So here's your journal prompts, okay? And I have 10 journal prompts from you. I'm going to just go through them. You can pause this video and you can do the journal prompts or you can like write them down as I talk. I don't care how you do it, but make sure that you do this work on January 2nd for the, for the new moon. Now, just so you know, the energy of the new moon are three days before and three days after. So if you are busy on January 2nd and you like have some opening availability on the third or the fourth, you can still work with the energies of this Capricorn new moon. Okay. Don't be like, oh shit, I missed it. Or I didn't open this email up in time. You're going to be fine. Okay. Journal prop number one, so that you can really get in touch with your shit for this Capricorn new moon is this. 
What are three concrete goals that I desire to accomplish in the next 28 days, the next lunar cycle, the next month, okay? So what are the three concrete goals that I desire to accomplish this month? Remember, concrete. Capricorns are concrete. They're not like wishy-washy, like I'm an Aquarius and I'm like, la, 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 la. no, 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 they're concrete. They're like, listen, this is how it is. This is what's happening, okay? So make three Set your intentions for three concrete goals that you desire to accomplish this month. Number two, what dreams, desires, or aspirations have been placed in my heart that I have been ignoring? And why have you been ignoring them? You know, we all have our in bitch tuition, right? In bitch, in bitch, in into bitching. <laughs> your intuition, HBIC, we all have it, okay? My friend Mia Magic calls it intuition, right? So we all have this inner knowing of like what we're supposed to do. What are your dreams? What are your goals? Why did God put you here? What is your purpose? We all know what it is. We're just refusing to go into the cave and like go in the dark and go around the creepy crawlies and figure it out, right? So what are the dreams, desires, goals, aspirations that God, the universe, your creator has placed on your heart that you are ignoring. And why are you ignoring it? Are you afraid? Are you afraid of failure? Are you afraid of success? Why? The next is what are my rules for January of 2022? It's like, what true rules that you do you desire to put into place and use the ambitious, the book, use ambitious, the podcast, think about the six life makers and breakers and go through like, what are the rules that I desire for my non-negotiable spiritual practices? What are they for my, you know, boundaries, my emotions? What are they for my health and wellness? What are they for my relationships? What are they for my environment? And what are they for my money mindset and like my abundance and wealth? Break them down in the six life makers and breakers. I think that's a great way to do it. The next number four journal prompt is what practices must, oh, what practices do I desire to cultivate this month going forward. So what practices do I desire to cultivate? So that practice could be like doing yoga every day, doing 10,000 steps every day, drinking a gallon of water, only eating out of the house one time a week, um, sleeping eight hours, right? Hiring a, someone to come clean your home, whatever. I don't care what it is for all of us. It's different. Maybe it's to save a certain amount of money and put a certain amount of money towards, you know, a, a really beautiful vacation in your bank account. So what practices do I desire to cultivate this month going forward? Number five is how can I reward myself for making it through the past two years on a daily basis? I really, really know this for a fact. And I feel this in the core of my being, like a lot of us, including myself, have not given ourselves like a pat on the back for like making it through the last two years. I have had so many friends, family members, um, colleagues, coworkers die. I've had them commit suicide. I've had them like go off their fucking rockers, you know, and totally like lose their shit. Like we're still here. We're still kicking. We might not be perfect. We might be broken in a lot of ways. We might be triggered. We might have a lot of fear. We might have a lot of flaws, but we're here. And that means that every day that we wake up and we have breath in our fucking ambitious bodies, that we're here for a purpose and a mission. And God is not done with us yet. So how can you reward yourself every day? Is it writing a reminder? Right? Is it talking about your big wins with your friends and family? What is it? Number six, what disciplines must I ad adopt to help my goals, dreams, and aspirations come to fruition? So what discipline or disciplines must I adopt to help my goals, dreams, and aspirations come to fruition? Remember the goat, the Capricorn, they're all about dis discipline, concreteness, rules, regulations, boxes, right? Putting things into like categories, like, okay, I have to do this because it's gonna help me do this. I have to do this, even though I don't really feel like it to help me do this. So what disciplines do you have to adopt to help you, right? Is it again, working out every day, right? There's difference between disciplines and practices. So what do those look like for you? Number seven, how am I wasting my precious time and how can I fix this? Listen, I am not standing here saying that I am perfect in every way because I am certainly not. There is times where I'm like, I want, I am going to watch seven hours of Vikings on a Sunday and I'm not going to move from my freaking couch only to pee and get like a drink of water. Seriously. 
And guess what? That's my right because I'm the HBIC of my magical life. And I have taken the last 20, almost 30 years to become who I am. Like if I want to take a whole day and watch Vikings, I can. And guess what? So can you, you can do whatever you want, but, but you know, when you're wasting time, you know, when you're not just like trying to tune out and just like rest and, re and recuperate and recharge, you know, when you're being a faffer, you know, when you're just like spanking your monkey in a corner, you know, when you're doing it. So what, how are you wasting your time every day and how can you fix it? Is it scrolling on social media all the time? Is it watching the news, right? Is it just like, you know, doing things that like you don't really need to do, but you feel like you should do it. Like, what is it? I want to know. Number eight is how am I the goat? How can I show up more like this? The goat, right? Tom Brady, the goat, the greatest of all time. How are you the goat in your own life? And how can you show up more like the goat? So like, if you think about your highest self, like who is the goat in your life? Like, so when I'm being the goat, it's like, I'm waking up, I'm doing my habituals, I'm setting my intentions for the day. I'm journaling, I'm meditating, I'm exercising, I'm drinking my gallon of water. I'm doing my 10,000 steps. I'm having my Purium green smoothie, right? Like I'm showing up on social media this way. I'm training my clients like this way. I'm having relationships with my, hu my husband like this, whatever. And you know what your highest self is. You know what she is. You know what it sounds like. You know what it smells like. You know what it feels like. You know what it looks like. Who is the goat for you? And how can you show up more like that goat in your own life on a daily basis? Number nine is how can I show up as my highest self right now? right now at this place, because a lot of times we're like waiting for the Monday. We're waiting for the, the break. We're waiting for the things to happen, but you have to show up as your highest self at every moment of every day of every second of every time of whatever. Okay. How can you show up as your highest self right now? Maybe it's doing some breath work. Maybe it's sitting in your meditation. Maybe it's like eating some high vibrational foods. Maybe it's listening to something inspirational like the ambitious podcast or this video or reading a book. How can you do that? And number 10, where in my life do I, I'm going to use the N word, need more order? Like what is chaotic in your life? What is not aligning with who you desire to be and where you're going? Tell me, I want to know, write it in your journal. Okay. I hope that this helped you. I hope that this was full of service. I feel like, you know, I showed up with all the value in the world for you. And I hope that you truly got so much value and received so much value from this video. So do your new moon rituals. I love to keep this party going over on the app. So let's talk about our journal prompts over on the app, app on the ambitious app after we do our journaling. So what I'll do is I'll, I will start a, a thread on the ambitious app about our journal prompts. We can share those journal prompts. We can talk about them deep, more deep, because I think that this year is about going really, truly deep and having real connection with other humans that are like-minded and loving. And you can do that over on the ambitious app. Uh, if you're interested, we still have openings for ambitious Academy. We actually, if you're watching this on January 2nd, we start Ambitious Academy tomorrow, but like you can jump into Ambitious Academy at any time. It is an evergreen program. I didn't want to make people like, you know, feel like, oh, I can only get in this one time and never, and have to wait. No, you can, you can jump into Ambitious Academy at any time you want. And if you have any questions about Ambitious Academy, just email me at hello at kbmfc.com, or you can inbox me over on the Ambitious app. Either way, I'd love to have this conversation with you. And I'm just looking so forward into helping you live your life ambitiously in 2022. So let's fuck the noise, fuck the excuses, and let's make 2022 our bitch. I love you all from the bottom of my little black heart. Happy 2022.